the main problems for during calculation and construction and the process is this problem of buckling. Even in Swiss regulations, this is not really regulated, so we had to develop our we had to develop an approach how we could prove the required stability of this uh, structure. We had to do a third theory calculation in, uh, with this uh, assumptions. This, all this had to be had to be de developed. Uh, we had to think of a certain type of concrete and uh, reinforcement, of course. And what we did then to prove the stability, we defined certain points, as you can see here. For example, it's difficult to see for me here. Yeah. For example, when you look at this point one, which is on top, th then we uh, did the uh, non-elastic uh, calculation and we uh, applied creeping and shrinking and then we started to put on additional loads onto the shell and then we, 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 could, we could calculate th this uh, d d deflections and here we at a certain point where, where, where this uh, line gets into a, into a horizontal tangent, we define that this would, should, would, should be the ultimate state and then we wanted to, we agreed on a safety factor of 2.8 and this is, uh, this was uh, our approach to, to, uh, to the stability. This is quite interesting. It gives you, it shows the, uh, the calculated deformation and the measured, uh, the measured deformation in the first year. And you see that we uh, measured almost only 60% uh, of the deformation we calculated. So I think we are on a, on a safe way. This very big horizontal forces introduced by this uh, by this main arches into the floor slab had to be tied together with by by post tensioning the the, 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 the concrete C certain details had to be uh, de developed to uh, allow this forces to to go through, and at the end, we we, we used um, we used tension rods not, you normally use for for bridges. H having done the calculation, the next task was the formwork. How do you how do you get a formwork being being so perfect? We had some experience, quite a, some experience with, uh, with double curved concrete walls. We did this building with, uh, for Frank Geary in Herford. Uh, we, we knew what, uh, what Holzmann did at, uh, again for Frank Geary in Düsseldorf at Solhof. And for Herford, we de developed this type of formwork, certain blocks of formwork that are unique, have to be manu manufactured e for, for, for each area of the wall, but they easily can be ma manufactured. You just have to, have to cut with a laser cutter these horizontal plates, each of them different, and, uh, and then you easily can, can manufacture such a block and put one on top of the other and you, you get the, the curvature of this sloped wall. This, the same technique we applied here for the Rolex Learning Center. The whole area was divided in 2.5 by 2.5 elements. Each of them have been prefabricated. U unique is unique and has been prefabricated and then shipped on site. Uh, we did a, a mock-up to define the quality of the formwork. And at the end, we could... We, these are the, the cho chosen elements, each of them being 
put on a, on a scaffolding tower. And then this is the, the result, uh, almost perfect, perfect surface, which by itself had, uh, had, uh, was really a very aesthetic, aesthetic thing. The second thing was the reinforcement. Since we had this uh, also in planned free-formed areas, we had to deal with different directions and different layers of, reinfo uh, of reinforcement. Uh, again, with the company, we did a kind of testing whether this formwork w was able, and certain details we had to we had to develop 3D drawings for the placement, and we ended up using 50 millimeter bars, 50, 50 millimeter bars, uh, which had to be welded together, since you, you cannot have a joint with overlap with uh, such bars being under compression. Pouring the concrete was quite unique. It was a task the, we, together with the company. We had to develop a certain recipe to, uh, to allow this, the concrete to be compacted uh, with such a high slope. We, uh, we added some vinyl fibers to the concrete. And this is a kind of rendering. And this is the quality we achieved at the end. And I have to say that I'm really happy with the, with the result. And uh, this is one of the pictures uh, as a structural engineer I, I like most. Uh, I have to say that uh, there are not many structures uh, around in the world uh, with such a brilliant aesthetics. The roof, as I said, um, main steel beams combined with, with timber beams. The, 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 upper, the upper surface of, the tip of this timber beam was, was milled down to be parallel, parallel to the roof surface. So the corrugated metal sheets could be directly put onto this timber. Now I want to conclude with some pictures of the completed building. Um, earlier I said uh, this, uh, s such a building is a thing once in a lifetime. I think no one will build such a thing again. No one will be able to, to have to spend so much money. Uh, the company Rolex only donated more than 30 million Swiss francs for this building. That's why it's named Rolex Learning Center. And without this donation and uh, some other sponsors like Nestle and UBS, this building would not have been possible since it, it exceeds even the allowable, even in Switzerland, the allowable costs for university buildings. Since pictures, are, with pictures it's difficult to explain the, uh, the, the qualities of the, of the interior, uh, I really would, uh, would advise you if you are, if you are in this area, go to this building, visit it, and a, a very good explanation you can find on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, there's a, just a four, four minutes movie, including a short interview with uh, Patrick Ebischer, who is president of the EPFL, and also with the architect, where they explain this building. And in three years, you will have the, the, the possibility to see a building of SANA, since uh, uh, they are this building is under construction, a new branch of the Louvre, which is built in Lens, actually not so far from here. Uh, again, we are on the area of a former coal mine. We have this building, uh, which is an, uh, this museum building, in, which consists of an entrance building and four museum wings. The whole thing is 400 meters long, though quite a, quite a very big building, and the entrance building Sorry, no concrete, only steel and glass. Uh, but uh, I'm sh sure it, when it's completed, this is a, a, 
a, a mock-up of the aluminum panels which will be put onto the concrete walls of the galleries and when it will, will be completed in three years it will be a, another beautiful thing of uh, we had the chance to develop with this Japanese based uh, with uh, this uh, architects of Sana. Thank you very much for your attention.